Hey everybody, this is Rob, and I'm the father of these three wonderful boys on the autism spectrum. Unfortunately, my wife Brittany couldn't make it this day. She was away with her mom and sisters on another trip. You might be wondering what trains have to do with autism, and the answer is not much, at least at first glance. Unless, of course, it's a hobby of someone on the spectrum. Beyond that, as I show you footage of our day trip, I wanted to talk about how therapy doesn't always have to be at a clinic or at a school or a one-on-one -on -one session. Some therapy is just getting out and clearing your head. I often wonder if this gets overlooked in the autism community, that there's such an obsession with the latest trends, ABA therapies, crazes, all in an effort to make our loved ones on the spectrum more like us, for lack of a better term, that we forget that people on the spectrum also need the same kinds of breaks we do, whether it be trains, boats, camping, some other getaway or hobby, the sky is the limit. Now, I can completely understand why trains wouldn't be some people's cup of tea, especially on the spectrum. They can be loud, a lot of smells coming from the trains, especially this coal train, may be off-putting to some. For my kids, well, I kind of raised them on the outdoors in the Wild West. I often joke with my wife that I was born a century too late. My kids followed suit. Call me crazy, but I love the billowing smoke and cinder from one of the last operating coal locomotives in America. It harkens back to a time when the frontier was open and imaginations were unlimited. And yes, I know things weren't perfect in the 1800s and early 1900s. Things are never perfect in any century, but I prefer to focus on the positive. This particular train is found in Ely, Nevada. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Many of these old locomotives have been converted to oil burning engines and it's just not the same. My kids actually love the smells and nostalgia of the old locomotive, and sure, they had to plug their ears when the whistle sounded, but it was worth the price of a fun train ride where they got to see tunnels, old mining buildings, tall rocky canyons, an old fake cemetery, and a ghost town. Which was a little cheesy, sure, but the kids liked it. There was just something fun and different for them, a mental health break from being cooped up inside all winter. We have long winters in northern Utah, so nearly everyone heads out on the road, around May when the sun starts coming out again. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the footage of this historical train and railroad. There was a tour afterwards and we saw some amazing engines and older railroad cars. It was nice to see the boys with smiles on their faces, and I hope this video is a good reminder that not all therapy needs to be behavioral therapy, or occupational therapy, or therapy confined to an office room, or whatever. Some therapy is just getting out and doing what you love. See you in the next video, friends.